Well, okay. Okay. So, in terms of, do you also work on employee engagement um, at West London? Um, yes, I guess so. When I'm out and about, I'm looking for employee engagement for Both. Okay, okay. All right. And what's kind of been the best and worst thing in, in um, getting these projects set up with employers? What's What's been the best thing about it and what's kind of been the hardest or the worst thing? Okay. So where they would start off kind of a bit unsure why they were bothering with the project. You know, you're not getting a qualification, so why do we need to do it? Yeah. Um, by the time they'd like done their third round of projects, you saw them really developing in their skills. And we had one particular student um, in Banbury who, um, when I was watching their presentation, I kind of asked, you know, what did you do differently this time and what are you going to do differently next time? And she said, um, for the first project, she felt really uncomfortable. She didn't like working in a group. Um, and she kind of really sat back and didn't take much um, participation in it. Okay. Um, and she said, well, for the second time, I kind of thought, well, I'll do a little bit more. So she was, I think, the creative manager for the group who kind of put together all the prototypes and designed the presentation. Um, and then she said, um, and next time, she said, Actually, I think I might put my name down for project manager for the next one. Oh, wow. Good at that. And honestly, that was like, oh, my gosh, that is the whole... Point of this. Yeah, it's like... And the teacher said she was such a shy, quiet girl when she used to come in. She just very much put her head down in her books and work. She wasn't very sociable at all. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, she's standing up in front of a group of employers and senior staff at the school, giving a presentation... And saying that actually she might be project leader next time. Like, that just summed it all up. I thought that was absolutely brilliant to see that, you know, you could see a real measured growth and development in that student. So you can see really, really see the students kind of responding to this curriculum, this type of... Yes, absolutely. As I said, at first they kind of aren't really sure what yeah. they're going to get out of it because, as I said, it doesn't lead to a qualification of yeah. the project side. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, they're written, especially the ones who get great feedback from the employers. They really, you know, are beaming, you know, when, especially if there's an employer that says they're going to take their ideas on board and they're actually going to go away and develop them and include them into the big project. Mm-hmm. That's an absolute great achievement for the students. Excellent. And then uh, what's been the hardest thing or the worst thing? The worst thing is the employers letting us down. So they kind of, you know, we, we do various um, projects that we try to do our main ones across um, 10 weeks mm-hmm. and we have employees that you know seem to be all up for it to start with but as the weeks go on because we kind of ask them you know if possible they, they come in once a week to meet with the students and make sure they're on track and unfortunately some employers just kind of fizzle out halfway through they suddenly become busy in their own world and they can't come in and then they don't seem to be that kind of interested in the project anymore. So I've had a couple of those, which has been a real shame. Okay. But, you know, it's, not, it's so disheartening for the students to think that, oh, they're not even really interested in what we're doing anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, so we're working on that, just trying to get, you know, that we have as many different relationships as possible so we know we can call on the strong one. Or if we've been let down a short notice, you know, we've got people we can call in and maybe come in quickly to do something. Got it. Okay, and then uh, in terms of, you know, sticking with the theme of how people have responded to things, how difficult was it actually to receive buy-in from the local schools when you were setting up this new school? Because clearly as a sponsor, you play a big role in that, so. Um, yes, yeah, so for local schools, um, especially with West London, um, it was very difficult. Okay. Because, um, again, naturally, the child's moving from primary to secondary, it would be very normal for secondary school to approach the primary children to tell them about the secondary school. Mm-hmm. So setting up the studio school, the people we want to get through are already in school. Mm-hmm. And those schools obviously would not let us come in and talk to their students to tell them that there was a new um, option available for them. Mm-hmm. Because if they lose their students, the school's directly losing funding. Exactly, yep. So if they were, I mean, there was nobody who was negative towards us and nobody who was kind of very anti us mm-hmm. but they were very you know not allowed 
allowing us to go in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see them. There was the one or two exception where if the secondary school didn't have a sixth form, they would let us go in and talk only to their sixth formers. Okay. Now, you know, when you leave at year 11, come to us for your A level. But the year 10 is a real struggle because schools will just not let us in to talk to them. Okay. And so how did you kind of get around that? Has recruitment been difficult? Marketing been difficult? Um, it has, but, you know, we've just been very proactive out in the local community. So we would go to any kind of local fairs that were happening. Okay. To have some kind of fun science games going on to attract children over and then explain, actually, we're at school, you know, you can come to us full time. Um, and lots of, you know, advertising in local magazines, on the back of buses. Um, we go to some big exhibitions, so there'd be some, like, career fairs. Mm-hmm. And it'd be mainly employers there, but they, the career fairs do attract school groups. So if, you know, it was a school group of the right age, we were, you know, able to say to them, well, actually, you know, before you even go into your career, if that's where you're heading, you can come to us to specialise with your GCSEs and A-levels. Got it. Okay. And so, um, what has the, just given the difficulties in kind of getting in, what has the, the student demographic been like? Is it a mixed ability group? You know, does it skew most, is it very self-selecting? Uh, um, yes, it's very self-selecting. Okay. Um, we, we are equal, um, we are equal banding. Yeah. In the schools itself, we do take um, an equal number of lower, middle and higher. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's kind of been a mixed bag where a lot, we, we seem to have a lot of the higher level students and mm-hmm. they're coming purely because they're passionate about the subjects and what they want to do. Mm-hmm. We then also have a selection of students that are actually coming to us because they're struggling in their schools. Okay. But it's because obviously they're in much bigger schools. They're probably not very academic uh, okay. and really finding it hard. Mm-hmm. But they like the idea of the studio school because it's a much smaller classroom. It's, you know, the whole school is a lot smaller, and we do lots of practical work. So you know, we often get parents saying, you know, oh, they're, you know, they're great with their hands. They love building things and making things. So it's kind of maybe those students that aren't as academic, mm-hmm. right on the engineering side and building. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other sort of side of the coin is it's the students that are really high level science and math students want to focus on that got it okay and then now as as you're more than likely aware you know there's been lots of news reports on lots of 14 to 19 well i shouldn't say lots of a few 14 to 19 schools studio schools utcs few free schools that are specialized that are actually closing um because of student numbers does your school actually face any such challenges um thankfully not at, no not at the moment um, we we're still fairly new mm-hmm. so we're still building on our way up mm-hmm. but i think because of the nature of the science schools and the whole space thing i think we're quite an attractive pool to students okay and i think you know most students you know young people will find the whole space thing quite exciting mm-hmm. well i do think you know our numbers you know are, are on, they're on the trend to increase um, and I think as long as we've got that right employer engagement, okay. which is stage increase, and we certainly hope to be near on full this September and then going forward, you know, we do see that the trend is that we will be completely full. Okay. I think it's also making sure that you're putting the school in the right area. Okay. Our limited with Heathrow and aerospace, a lot of people who live in the area have aspirations to work at Heathrow you know, or want to be pilots or, you know, the biggest employer on their doorstep uh-huh. actually looking to that kind of industry anyway. Mm-hmm. But I do think, you know, it's depending on what the theme of it is, mm-hmm. um, in the right place to attract the right type of students. Okay. And so what role, I mean, you've kind of alluded to this just now, what role do you actually see the two schools playing in their individual areas? Um, I definitely think, you know, it's, it's, it's two things, I think. One, the specialism. Okay. You know, and as I said, the kids that really want to specialise coming to those schools. Mm-hmm. Um, and then secondly, it's actually just the structure of the studio schools. As I said, so many students, I think, aren't coping in big schools and they need a much smaller environment. Mm-hmm. And really...